I actually bought a dress for this event. It's a nice dress. It's a green one. But obviously, apparently, if you wear something like this on screens, you look like a big green blob. So that didn't work out very well for me. There are usually expectations. And some of these are expectations from the society, and some of the expectations come from us. And the reason why I'm telling you the story about the dress is to show you that I'm actually a human being and a nice person. You see, we really like to label people. When I say a coder, you probably think that this is someone who is socially awkward. When I say a poet, you probably think that this is someone who is drunk all the time. When I say a feminist, you probably think that it's a nice person who likes spending time with friends, drinking wine, and just laughing the night away. No. Of course you think this is someone who is really angry all the time, ranting on social media, and just being scary for men and women alike. So let me tell you a story how I became a feminist, but a nice one. When I was in my 20s, I was studying in university, I was more interested, actually, in being thinner than writing my thesis. And I'm a very effective and resourceful person. So I did both. I ordered pills from China. I couldn't sleep when I was drinking these pills. And I couldn't eat. So I had a lot of time to become thinner and a lot of time to write my master's thesis. There were rumors, well, not really rumors, true stories that there were women who had died taking these pills. I really didn't care, because I was ready to die thin. <laughs> and this maybe sounds like a really sad story, but I will not tell you the story of my classmate who was living on boiled carrots for two weeks. I was also really afraid to die alone, as I was consuming a lot of women's magazines. And I thought that I'm smart. I thought that I will never get married, and I will die alone preferably thin, but still alone. <laughs> and I try to be perfect. You probably know that, for example, anorexia is something that is part of the life of a person who wants everything to be perfect. And in my 30s, I realized that I can't be perfect. I can't be a perfect mother. I can't be a perfect employee. I can't be a perfect friend. But still, I have the feeling that I need to be perfect. So I started looking around why a person who comes from a family with strong women is so concentrated on the looks and not on the mind? And why do I have this urge that I need to be perfect? Well, I've always been interested in communication. And by that time, it was approximately five, six years ago, I already had a blog running, and I was very active on social media, and uh, I was writing a lot of articles. And I was attending a lot of events. For example, I was attending an event which was aimed at women and business. From 13 speakers, only two were women. Last session was aimed at teaching women how to put on makeup. When I asked on social media, would something like this happen in a conference which is aimed at men in business? The answer was, well, women are just interested in these things. We're just operating with what we have. And when I asked, are there really no women that can talk in these conferences aimed at women in business? The answer was, we never choose based on gender. We only choose based on human beings. Women are not just good enough. It just is what it is. I consume a lot of media. And so I asked the question, why does a national business newspaper, it's actually 2012, run a contest for the best secretary of the year where only Secretaries are only women. Bosses are only men. And main capacities of a secretary, well, when you have a discussion about main capacities of secretary, you discuss if she needs to be higher than one meter and 75 centimeters, or just smaller is good enough as well. And does she need to read all the boss's wishes from his eyes, or just being good at Excel is fine as well? So the first part of this contest was actually based on pictures. And women are very resourceful and very creative. So they mostly uploaded pictures where they have only swimming suits. The girl with the best swimming suit probably won. I also, I sometimes fly with Air Baltic. I've seen men there. They work as pilots and stewards. 
But in the yearly calendar that Air Baltic offers, there are only women. It's really sad. I want to see naked men as well. <laughs> and of course, conferences. <laughs> conferences. <laughs> women are not just good enough. Don't laugh, OK? It's based on human beings. It's not, it's not about gender, OK? Especially, actually, in PR and advertising, where I work. It's mostly women work in PR and advertising. But when you to go to a conference or listen to a panel discussion, so many men. Women are not, just not good enough. So people who work in communications, for us, storytelling is a big thing. Digital storytelling, writing press releases, pushing products and ideas in the media and to a broader society. For people who work in non-governmental sphere, we talk about these fluffy things, inclusion, diversity, being nice to people, not being racist, for example. Well, for me as a person who is working in, has been working in both of the areas, I kind of try to connect both. And sometimes I think about these stories that communicators create. These are not stories, these are fairy tales. For example, how about this one? What do you think about a black face? Is it a good thing? So it's clearly a white person. I think he's actually sitting here <laughs> wearing a black face. And when there was a discussion, and it's actually a poster from an organization who does really a lot in society integration, the answer was that Latvians can't be racist. They've never owned slaves. And advertising exists in the society, and we are all biased. We all use stereotypes. And of course, there are certain expectations that we expect from women and we expect from men. And for advertisers and for the media, it's so much easier to use stereotypes because the messages need to be simple. And what about this simple message? A woman who is strong and independent and working actually just hasn't found the right man that will make her feel vulnerable. How about this idea that there are certain professions for men and certain professions for women? And this is something inspiring, actually, for women. Anything can be sold with your body. It can be a man's fashion magazine. It can be an energy drink. And you don't even need a face to do that. <laughs> it can also be beer. It can also be a lamp or a car or just anything you wish. Advertisers just need to spread their imagination and use your body as they please. My mom works in medicine for 40 years. Hi, mom, by the way. I would just imagine, this is an advertisement that is oriented towards men, so that they get their technical checkups yearly. And I imagine just, you know, they walk inside, and they're waiting for this go-go dancer, and that's my mom. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. And then there's the work season for women. It's usually autumn, as you know. Usually we go to a plastic surgery, enlarge our breasts, and do it every year. So this is, yeah. So the usage of these stereotypes kind of defines the fine line of a society thinks are appropriate roles for men and women. For example, the good mom, she cooks, cleans, takes care of the family. And as girls grow into their teens, the media continues to play a significant role in the development of the identity. Not only actually girls, but also boys as well. And there has been so much research, starting from 1970s, that says that stereotyping, not only gender, but also cultural stereotypes, are really bad for the society. First of all, advertisements present young girls with unrealistic beauty norms. But it's not the only problem. Ah, oh, this is just a picture of me and my friends hanging out in a hotel room. <laughs> we look the same. You've probably noticed this about women. No, really, it's actually the advertisement uh, for dance classes. Uh, and sometimes I think that no one actually thinks that women own money in 2016. Capital City sent me an SMS offering a Black Friday sale with girls and booze. And I was just wondering, like, where do girls nowadays get their computers? They probably don't buy them because obviously they are not the target audience for these guys but they are a target audience for some other stuff. And when I was saying that there are no panel discussions for women, I was kind of lying. There are. You can see one there. It's there. It's a panel discussion on yogurts. This is what we have. But there is another way. 
You can always look at the diversity as something that you owe to women and minorities. You don't really have to do it, but they're begging, so you do it. But actually, it's very good for business. And in recent years, diversity has been one of the prominent issues that companies have addressed in their websites. Public relations agencies have been under fire for their lack of racial, ethnic, and gender diversity at senior management le levels. So, diversity is good for the society, and it is good actually for the business. So, what to do when you notice these crazy things going on in the media? You can talk about it, but let me tell you that talking gender issues on the internet is not a nice thing to do. You will be always criticized. For example, you don't like anorexic models in advertisements? It's because you're fat. <laughs> so you don't like the church interferes with women's rights? It's just the Satan speaking. But really, don't worry, don't worry. We will keep praying for you because we love you. <laughs> so you are talking about gender-neutral parenting? It's because you don't have kids. Oh, you have kids. Well, they will be criminals. <laughs> and if you want social change, you keep talking because you go to an inspirational seminar, you read an inspirational article, and we are used to this idea that social change comes really fast. It's 2016, after all. Like revolutions happen on Facebook, and nothing happens. And uh, actually, when I, was, well, when I was invited to speak here, I wanted to call my presentation how I totally failed doing anything with the help of social media. But that would be really sad to come with this idea, right? So I started looking for good signs. And for the whole two weeks, I was looking for good signs to happen. And what I decided is that we usually look for change in the system. We never look at ourselves as the part of the establishment. We are just onlookers looking at what's wrong at the society. And we wait for the systematic changes and they never come as fast as we wish they would come. But we should actually look at people. Two years ago, when there was a plan to ban abortion in Latvia, we really had a feeling that no one would come to make a protest. No, when there was an idea to uh, ban women's rights to donate their eggs, for two days, 150 people came. It's not really a lot, but it is something. And actually, you don't need thousands of people. You just need at least a few people looking at the advertisements, looking at the media, and critically thinking and talking about what's going on. And only then we can have a hope. Thank you.